morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Let me put on a microphone here so you can, everybody can hear me clearly. I'm going to totally wired up here where I'm wearing an earbud microphone for the phone and got that going on Facebook here in a sec. You're so cool, Zach. <laughs> no, it's not cool. It's yeah, you're the cool I'm one. Way to feel my pain. <laughs> so cool. All right, I'm going on mute so that I don't like interrupt you in rude fashion. No, no, that's why I wanted to use Zoom in those is make it as interactive as possible. This is more like a small group than a than a uh, you know me shooting a video. So uh -oh. yeah, so interaction's good. Feel free to ask a question or jump in. Um, so I'm going to start talking here. Hey, North Hills. Um, I am just up and live here, both on Facebook and on Zoom. So I'll be kind of diverting my attention back and forth between the two of them. Um, so if you guys see me like looking away, I'm probably looking at the rest of us you know, on the other platform between my to my computer and uh, the, the Facebook thing. I'll be jumping back and forth here. This morning is meant to be interactive. It's meant to be us having a conversation about how we connect with God. And, um, and so this isn't like some professionally produced video that I need to, you know, repost for all my YouTube followers. There are none. Let's get real. Um, <laughs> this is, this is, this is just for us as a church family to, to spend some time this morning talking about the glory of God and, and how we connect with him and stuff. And so I hope you guys brought your coffee or whatever your drink of choice is. If you haven't tried Desert Eagle coffee, what I'm showing off here, they're, uh, they're pretty good. Uh, Maverick and I got up this morning about 5.30, as he normally does. So we went and spent some time together uh, doing a little bit of worship in the car. Uh, listening to some music and we went and got him a smoothie and got me some coffee and that kind of stuff. So coming to you just as a normal morning would be where my son gets me up earlier than I'd want to be. And then, um, you know, I sit down with God with the bed head and all that kind of stuff. Nothing here is really that overly produced other than I plugged in a microphone so you guys could hear me. So, um, uh, <laughs> Tammy, I will have to try the human being. I haven't been over there uh, to try that coffee yet, but I love, I love trying new places. So I will definitely get over there to uh, to try that. So, well, let's um, let's open just in a word of prayer, just because we are together and we are God's people. Let's connect with Him and invite Him um, to to be with us. To to you know, He's already here, but to acknowledge His presence and invite Him to be here with us. So, let's pray together real quick. Father God, thank you for the cool mornings. Even in the midst of summer, we can enjoy a little fresh air and a cool morning here in Arizona. And thank you for uh, the way that the sun is, is shining through this tree this morning outside my window and making all kinds of cool shadows and things like that. I've just been enjoying that, Lord. And thank you for our family that we can gather together here to, to uh to love you, experience your glory, and worship you in, in kind of hopefully a new way for all of us this morning. And it's in your name we pray all these things, Lord. Amen. So uh, my goal for us this morning is to share uh, some time together and, and me share how I experience God and the glory of God on a regular basis. It's so important. It's what we were created for. We see that, that Adam and Eve are walking in the garden before sin, spending time with the Lord. They're spending time with him where they're being filled up with his presence. And, and I don't have any like hard facts to back this up, but, but this, this intuition I have is that you know we were made to live eternally and then sin entered the world. I mean, uh, death entered the world with our sin. And so there, there seems to be this correlation between being in the presence of God and being sustained both physically, emotionally, spiritually, being, being, you know, like rejuvenated and, and restored, healed in his presence. And, um, and so we all need that, right? We all need healing. We all need uh, to be refreshed. And so, um, you know, traditionally 
devotions happen in the morning, right? Where we connect with God and we're refreshed and ready to go for the day as part of like our, our, our rest, you know, period. Um, and so uh, what I want to do this morning, if you have your Bibles with you, is open up to Exodus chapter 24. We're going back to that passage I was talking about last Sunday. And um, we're going to read just a, a few verses to kind of set the stage of what we're going to be talking about this morning. And um, this is, this is you know, pretty unscripted and, and just kind of off the cuff. So if you got questions or comments or anything like that, I'm trying to watch both screens. But you guys can uh, talk to me on, on Zoom. You can, you know, comment in on, uh, on Facebook here. And I'll try to bring that, bring that to light in our conversation this morning. Okay? So. Uh, verse, I'm sorry. Verses again. Chapter and verse again. Uh, Exodus 24. And we're actually going to start in verse 1. So. I'm using a paper Bible this morning. If you want to use, you know, the Bible on your phone or whatever, that's totally cool. I just, I usually do use the Bible on my phone, but I'm using my phone as a camera right now, so that wouldn't work. So <laughs> I've got the, the preaching Bible with me. Uh, this is the one that I make notes in when I, when I take the Bible up on stage at church. So, all right, let me read this to us. Then the Lord said to Moses, come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the 70 of the elders of Israel. You are to worship at a distance. Here's the instructions. You are to worship at a, at a distance. So I circled the word worship. You guys don't have to do that, but you know, I just wanted that to stand out to me. Verse two, but Moses alone is to approach the Lord. The others must not come near him and the people may not come up with him. Verse three, when Moses went up and told the people all the Lord's words and laws, they responded with one voice. Everything the Lord has said, we will do. Moses then wrote down everything the Lord had said. He got up early the next morning. Hey, that's like us. We're here. He got up early the next morning and he built an altar. If, you, if you're using your Bibles now, let's, let's underline this, this, these three words here. Built an altar. He built an altar at the foot of the mountain and he set up 12 stone pillars. Underline 12 stone pillars. They're representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Then he sent young Israelite men, and they offered burnt offerings and sacrificed young, young bulls as fellowship offerings to the Lord. So underline burnt offerings and sacrificed young, bill, young bulls, and then underline fellowship offerings. Moses took half of the blood and put it in bowls, and the other half he splashed against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it to the people. Let's underline that. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it to the people. Underlined there. Stop your underline. And then we're actually going to pick up a new underline right here. It says, they responded, we will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey. Verse 8. Moses then took the blood, sprinkled it on the people and said, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Verse 9, Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel went up and saw the God of Israel. Uh, I want to I want to underline um, went up, or maybe you want to circle it because it's kind of got a, a gap there, but I want to I want to highlight that those words went up. They saw the God of Israel, and under his feet was something like a pavement made of lapis lazuli, as bright blue as the sky. But God did not raise his hand against these leaders of Israel, leaders of the Israelites. They saw God and they ate and drank. Let's pause right there. So what's going on here is what we're going to be talking about, you know, through this time together. The first thing they did when they got up early in the morning is, sorry, but let me back it up. They're, they're going to take four steps to worship the Lord. And in worshiping the Lord, they're going to experience his glory. Okay, that's what we're here for this morning. That's what we need to be here for every morning is to, is to experience his glory. And so uh, they do four things and we're going to copy those four things over the next four weeks as we get together and, and kind of have a conversation about them so that you can put them together to experience God when you go to see him. Right. So that you can put together your own worship service. Right. Right in your homes. Right. So what they did was the first thing was that they built an altar and they put up 12 stone pillars. And so what are they doing here? 
Well, they are, they are talking about praise. You know, you've heard like praise and worship and there's like a difference between the two. Well, in this moment, they are making an effort to praise God. So maybe if you have a notebook with you, write praise as kind of our first step. And, uh, um, and then the second thing they do, I'm writing it in my notebook too. That's why I'm looking down. Um, the second thing that they do is that it says they, um, um, uh, took the book of the covenant and they read it to the people. Well, the book of the covenant is all the laws and things that, that, uh, Moses was writing down for the people. It's probably includes the, the, you know, what we would call the Torah as the Torah was developing the first, you know, couple books of the Bible there. And, um, and so as he's reading the book of the covenant, what are they doing? Well, they're, they're reading scripture. And so we're going to read scripture together. We're going to talk about reading scripture together and we will read some scripture together. But the second thing that they do to experience the glory of God is, is to read scripture. So that's what we're actually going to talk about doing next week. The third thing they do is it says they responded. They responded to the, the praise and they responded to the scripture reading. And how, how do we respond to God today? We pray. And so we're going to spend time talking about prayer. We're going to spend time in prayer together during these four weeks. And, and then the last thing they do, the last thing that I, you know, said that, you know, there was a little clue in there and maybe we needed to circle it or something like that down, down there. But, um, I lost my spot here. Uh, what was the thing that what was the last thing I asked you guys to circle? They went up. They went up. That's right. It's a, it's a small little clue, but, but what is it that they're really doing there? They're pursuing. See, see, God pursues us throughout scripture. We see that. We know that to be true in our lives. God pursues us and he wants us to turn around and pursue him back, right? That's a relationship where we're reaching out to him and, go, and going after him, where we go seeking his glory in new ways. Like we're going to experience his glory here, but then how do we take this experience into the rest of our day and into the rest of our life? How do we go up where we, where we go after his glory? And so that'll be the, the fourth and final week. And what we talk about is, is how do we go find his glory? How do we go seeking his glory? And what does that, what does that take? And, um, um, and so I'm going to write seek his glory in my, in my little notebook here. So today we're going to talk about the, the first one of that, the, the praise. All of these things are actually acts of worship. All of these things are, are ways that we can worship the Lord. But, but first, I want to talk about praise. And so um, I said this was going to be interactive. I wanted to get everybody involved. And so what are some ways that we can praise God? Let's just have a conversation about it. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and comment in. I'll read some of those comments off to, to kind of transfer this information over to Zoom. I'm the, going to be the connector here. And if you're on Zoom, you can go ahead and just speak up. And I don't know if my mic will pick it up, but I'll repeat what you guys say over to the, uh, over to the Facebook crew. So how can, we, how can we praise the Lord? My turn for coffee. I usually start my morning with uh, worship songs, worship praise, um, via a uh, Christian radio station and my own uh, my own list, my own playlist. Yeah. So uh, Carol Cooper uh, just suggested listening to Christian radio praise music um, in order to in order to you know find some some praise music that you can sing along with and stuff. She says she has her own playlist. Maybe you have your own CDs. Maybe you tune into YouTube. Carol, that's one of the ways I do it as well. I use YouTube, and so I have a YouTube playlist uh, of favorite songs. Um, and so, uh, um, so some, some praise music is definitely a good move. Um, Jan uh, Berghaus over on Facebook just said uh, she uses praise hymn music. I'm not sure if she's saying that she's using actual like H-Y-M-N hymns. 
Uh, it's Praise Him with a capital H-I-M. So maybe she's just echoing you, Carol. But uh, some hymns, if you have your own hymnal or you can Google them, is also a great way to worship. I actually use those as ways to put my boys to bed at night, not because they're boring, but because uh, they're easy to sing to, right? Like that's one of the characteristics of a hymn is that they're four parts and they're easy to sing to. And so if I'm singing and I'm not very good, uh, and we need to sing, you know, in, uh, uh, you know, just an acapella fashion. Um, I pull up hymns on my phone. My phone acts as a hymnal now. And so I'll pull up uh, hymns on my phone that I can spend uh, time just singing to my boys. What are, what are other ways we can, we can praise God? Think about the, uh, think about what these guys were doing in their, um, not the actual act of what they were doing, but what is what they were doing represent? What does it accomplish for them um, in their sacrifices and their sprinkling of blood and, you know, those sorts of things that they were doing here? Live according to his word, how your actions, how you treat other people. We I act think that's a we act according to his word. Is that what you're saying, Carol? Yes, act according to his word, what he's told us. Yeah. When I'm angry, I try to bite my tongue because it's not very Christian to tell someone off. <laughs> Carol's just saying that uh, we act according to his word and what, how, what he tells us. And so she says, uh, you know, when she gets angry, it's not uh, real good to act out at that moment because she needs to just bite her tongue and not tell somebody off. Uh, Mike Hicks is saying that um, we can praise him in prayer. Yep. Like definitely we're going to talk more about prayer in the third week of this but that's also not only is that um you know sort of part of our our methods as far as worship but it's also can be a method of praise as well um what they were doing here when it says that they set up an altar and then they set up these 12 pillars was they were remembering they were remembering the things god has done in the relationship and that can be so important for all of our relationships because we often keep score in our, in our earthly relationships, um, in our sinful nature. We keep score with our, our spouses, with our siblings, those sorts of things of like all the bad things that they did to us, right? And we're, we're renewing our minds. We're resetting our minds uh, when we go meet with the Lord in the mornings and, and we get to try and practice something different because the Lord has never done anything wrong uh, for us to keep score. All we got to work with is all the good things, all the blessings he's poured out on our lives. Um, and so we can praise him by remembering the good things. And so they set up 12 pillars to represent the 12 tribes of Israel to help their children remember, help their children remember that like God made you into this nation. He made you into 12 tribes, 12 peoples, and brought you here, sustained you, and, and brought you here. And so we can remember like how God has sustained us, how God has made us wonderfully, how he's provided for us and brought us to the place where we are. Um, then the, the altar is the gospel. The altar represents, remember when we talked about um, Abraham's story a couple weeks ago in the, in the message, it represents uh, that, that there is, you know, death, that must occur as the result of sin. Like, like that's, that's the consequences of sin. And that God said, I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna pass between these pieces. And so let it be done to me as it was to these animals that were torn apart. You know, that if, if either one of us does not honor this contract, let that be done to me. And so this was setting up their minds. It was reminding them of that moment, I think with, with, uh, with Abraham, that's just my own assumption, but I think since they're remembering God, I think that's a pretty strong assumption. That, that, um, uh, uh, because our God is not one that just needed to be appeased, right? Like all the other Canaanite gods, the gods of all these people around them wanted to be appeased by these sacrifices. And God always comes in and he like reframes stuff for us. He helps clarify stuff for us. And so he reframed sacrifices at that moment with Abraham, where, where God walked and passed between the, the broken bodies of those animals. And so uh, they're remembering that, like, we have a Lord that sacrifices for us, that sacrifices to be in relationship with us. 
And, um, and so we remember, we can praise him by remembering what he has done. One of my favorite uh, worship songs right now is King of Kings. It's a Hillsong song. And, um, and I love it because it's like storytelling. Like it's, it's written actually a lot like a hymn where, where it's just like telling the story uh, uh, through the song. And so you might pick songs that remind you of how good God is and what he's done in your life and how he's impacted your life and that kind of stuff. So um, let me go back to the comments here. Um, Phil and Ruth Ann says, uh, when I walk each morning, I see so clearly the beauty of the earth God has given to us. Yes. Yes. I, uh, I had kind of thought about the same thing of, you know, like, how do we, how do we commune with God? How do we praise him? Well, we go looking for those things, right? Like whether it's on a walk or a drive or, a, or it's, you know, snuggling your little boy on the couch or whatever we go looking for the beauty that God has created. And then it's important for us to acknowledge it. So, <clears throat> sorry. So even in, even in, you know, moments where you might be sitting on the couch or something, holding on to your little boy or whatever, acknowledging that beauty out loud, say it out loud, even if it's only for you to hear is, it's good for us and it's good for God. Sorry, I just hit the microphone. So hopefully that didn't make a big noise on, on Zoom. But um, uh, those are ways that we, that we praise him. And uh, so I, uh, I don't want to take up, you know, all morning for you guys, but I want you guys to be thinking about and looking for ways to praise God, ways to remember who he is, ways to acknowledge that, because it's going to do something in our hearts. It's going to draw us nearer to God. It's going to remind us of our love for him. It's going to prepare our hearts to be on the lookout for love. And it's going to, uh, for that love of him. And it's going to also prepare our hearts for the day where we, um, we, uh, uh, shoot, need another sip of coffee. Uh, just totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> Yes, you can laugh at me. That's okay. <laughs> um, um, uh, what was the other one? Um, it, uh, oh, it, it puts us, as we remember what God has done, it puts us in a grateful place. So it's renewing our minds and, and preparing us to walk with the Lord because it puts us in a grateful place. Really, when we're talking about how great God is, it's humbling for us, not humbling in like low self-esteem way, humbling in helping us understand our right place in the world, helping us understand where we really stand in, in the grand scheme of things, both that we, you know, are not as great as we thought we are, but that we are loved beyond all measure as well. So, um, uh, you know, lyrics of songs and stuff are important. And uh, I'd like to kind of just close us out this morning uh, by, by singing a song together. It's a song to remind us of, I know, it's, uh, you maybe don't want to sing. Uh, you can mute yourself if you're on Zoom right now so that you only have to hear me singing. Uh, you don't have to share that with the rest. Um, uh, but uh, <laughs> I'll sing. And if you need to mute me and just watch my lips move, that's okay too. <laughs> Uh, I'm a little raspy still uh, in the morning here, but um, I'll sing because this is what I do. And I wanted to share that with you guys. I wanted to share with you guys how, how I, how I, you know, commune with God in the morning. And the first step of that is this praise. That's where I go to first. Um, I, uh, I, this kind of developed for me actually prior to me realizing it in this scripture. It was just like the rhythms that I got into. And I think that when we're re in God's word on a regular basis and the Holy Spirit dwells within us, we pick up a lot of this almost by osmosis, you know, kind of like how it's more more is caught than taught, you know. Uh, um, and so it, I was when I when I read this passage last week, I was like, oh, there, there's my morning right there. <laughs> it's like written in scripture. I was like, so cool. So, um, uh, but let's, the song I want to do today is one of my boys favorites from their bedtime time. And it's one that Alyssa and I regularly use together, um, in like mornings and stuff like that, because we need to be reminded of this message. We need to be reminded like the 12 pillars of God's provision 
how he's created us, how he's provided for us, how he's brought us to where we are right here, right now. Okay. So it's amazing grace. It's, it's, you know, uh, one of, one of the, one of the greats. And so, uh, uh, those of you on zoom, if you'd like to mute yourself, you can, otherwise you guys can sing along with me, but, uh, let's just sing together wherever you are, uh, this morning. We'll, uh, we'll just kind of do this song together. So. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now. I see, t'was grace that taught my heart to, need some more coffee, and that's okay. <laughs> Is it too fear? Can I get a head nod? Thank you. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear and fear. Uh, grace, my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear? The hour I first believed, my chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, this is the Zach version, his mercies rain. Unending love and amazing grace. We'll end it there because my brain is not remembering the lyrics this morning, but, uh, but that's all it takes. That's all it takes is remembering, remembering the one who loves us and remembering what he's done for us. And um, Alyssa always laughs at me because I kind of like, and I probably did it this morning, I shift everything around in these songs. Uh, but I'm singing from the heart. I'm singing what I remember that's important to me from the Lord. I'm singing what, uh, what my experience is with God. And, and that's the point of these songs is to glorify him to glorify him and thank him for all that he's done for us. And then also to, to remind us of all that he's done for us and remind us of his glory. So that we're experiencing that glory. Um, and so spend some time in praise every morning with the Lord, where, where you just are reminded of what he's done and what he's done for you. Um, and uh, sorry, for, sorry for the poor, the poor singing and probably skipping around on, you know, verses and choruses there and stuff, but it's just a little bit of, I wasn't planning on singing the whole song, so it was just a little bit something. And, um, and have you ever had a day where you carried a song with you all the way through the day and it just totally changed your day? You can, you can do that. You can set yourself up for that through your time with God every morning where you experience the glory of him and you're like, whoa, this matters to me. These words are impacting my heart and my soul today. And so I'm going to carry it through the day. And psychologically, we actually know that uh, if you don't know the words to a song, your brain will replay it over and over again. And so I try to sing songs from memory like that because I just got Amazing Grace wrong and I know that I did. And now I'm gonna be like figuring out the song the rest of the day where I'm gonna be trying to recall it again. And, um, and if I do that, instead of just reading the lyrics, guess what? I'm gonna carry Amazing Grace with me through, through my whole day. So, uh, so don't get hard on, don't like beat yourself up or get too hard on yourself or think it has to be you know, all super well done or anything like that. It's, it's about our heart joining with God's heart. It's, us, it's about us experiencing his glory, being reminded of his glory and that kind of stuff. So thank you guys for joining with me this morning. We're going to do this a uh, couple more times uh, on Wednesday mornings going forward, where next week we're going to talk about reading scripture and how I incorporate that into my morning. And, uh, and we'll hear from you guys, kind of how you guys do that as well. Um, and how we, how we experience him through reading his scripture. 
And so uh, we'll continue doing this, but add, add some praise into your mornings or, or any time during the day so that, uh, so that you're experiencing God's glory and you're carrying that with you, okay? Thank you guys for joining us this morning. I want to let you guys kind of take, get on with your day. So a quick half hour is really good for all of us. It was so awesome to see all your smiling faces this morning uh, on Zoom over here. And you're, thank you for your comments over here on Facebook. It's, uh, it's been really great to, uh, to, to hang out. And thank you for the song suggestions. I see uh, a couple of them popping in over here on Facebook too. Um, and so I'll be checking those out. Uh, so we got Quarantine Life by Matthew West. Um, uh, let's see, anybody else suggest another one here? Um, uh, glory. Thank you guys for the comments. Um, I guess they were more affirmations than song suggestions, but we got that one there with uh, Quarantine a Life by Matthew West. I'll have to look that one up. I'm not sure I know that. <laughs> Is that that comedy video that he created that I've heard about? Okay, so I'll have to go, that's not a song. I'll just have to go check that one out for fun. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, bring your favorites next week. When we gather together next week, we'll, maybe we'll talk about our favorite songs that we, uh, that we experienced over this past week and we'll share those with each other. One last tip, sorry, I forgot one thing up front because I did, this was off the cuff. I didn't, you know, create like a message script that I went with. I literally was just taking notes with you guys. Um, but your notepad is really awesome for connecting with God because when you sit down and you've got the worries of the world running through your head, put them down on paper. Here's your, your prayer request list for later on when we get to prayer but also you can relax your brain knowing, hey, I just wrote down all those things I was thinking about that I needed to do. I just wrote them down on this pad, so I'm not gonna forget about them. I'm just gonna set that aside for a minute. And I'm gonna go be with the Lord, okay? So that's just a, a little tip of something that I do is I'll just make a quick note and then I know I can come back to that note and I don't have to worry about that stuff. And then when I get to prayer as part of my morning, I might circle back to that and pray about those things. Uh, before I before I go on so all right guys I love you all and this was fun thanks for for joining me this morning I see we'll your do... recording are you gonna post this uh yeah so the one on the, the Facebook side is gonna post up just like we our live prayer videos do oh, okay. uh, Kathy just asked if we're recording this and if we're gonna post it and then the the one on um on the zoom side I'm recording it goes into our zoom account but now I've got this as video on my computer where I can post that onto our YouTube. Because sure. I think so. people would really like to do this, but you know, they're working or sleeping. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. so those will be posted up. If this was helpful to you, meaningful to you, uh, you can share it with other people via yeah. Facebook or YouTube later today. So uh, it'll just take a couple minutes for both the videos to upload fully to our, to our, to our sites. But uh, yeah, they can, they can get access to that. And if they're trying to find our YouTube accounts or whatever through our website, nhcog.com, there's links on the website to, you know, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, that kind of stuff. Um, if you can't remember like what the, you know, the, you know, the YouTube account name or is or whatever. So, but you can always just search North Hills as well. All right. Great guys. Love you all. Miss you. Miss you so much. And uh, this was really great to be together this morning doing this. Uh, this is how, you know, I create, you know, a worship service in my house or on my back patio or whatever um, uh, almost every day. So, all right. Have a good one, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.